So a number of my subscribers have asked me about Starlink in Mexico. I'm Brighton and I live half time in Mexico, half time in the United States. I live in La Paz, which is in the Baja Peninsula, and we have Starlink connected at our house. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what I know about Starlink and also what I don't know. And I'm really hoping that one of you can help me figure this all out so I can produce another video that's uh, more in depth and really tells you the details about Starlink because sometimes it's not super clear. So let's start out with what I know. Starlink is available in Mexico. I think it's available across all of Mexico. It's really great if you're in a rural area. I've got some friends, Tim and Julie, who live out on the coast. Uh, they don't have electricity, they don't have water, uh, but they have internet because of Starlink, which just would not be available otherwise. Now, I am just outside La Paz. I have a fiber internet connection. And um, so because my wife and I work from home, it's very important that we always have an internet connection. So since we moved to Mexico, we've always had two. So right now I have Telmex fiber, and now we have Starlink along with that. It used to be mega cable was our backup. And of course we always have our cell phones to use as kind of the third option. And I'll also talk about a software that combines these together, which I really like. So Starlink available in Mexico. Let's talk about the cost. The cost in Mexico is less than in the United States. So the cost is about $55 a month and about $400 to get the initial package. Now, one thing to know with that initial package is Starlink comes with a, a, a router slash Wi-Fi hub. And the new version that they're sending out now does not include an ethernet port. And why that's important is if you want to run like a mesh network or something to get to all the far corners of your house. So we have a mesh network that's, you know, one in the middle of the house and one on each end of the house. If we want to use that mesh network, you need to have an ethernet cable to connect it together. I guess you could connect it by Wi-Fi, but you'd be losing a lot of speed every time you have a Wi-Fi jump. So, you do have to buy a separate part for that to happen. So just be aware of that. And when you're setting you know, or when you're buying your, your Starlink originally, make sure that you buy the, uh, the Wi-Fi or excuse me, the, the Ethernet port. Also, uh, I want to say it was like 50 bucks or something. So uh, an additional charge to think about. The Wi-Fi that comes from Starlink, I found is not very good in terms of how far it will go in our house. You can actually map out. They've got a really nice app. You can map out how well it works in your house. And what I found is it works pretty poorly, uh, especially compared to a mesh network. So that is important to know. The satellite also has to have a north view that is completely unobstructed. If you have any obstructions in that north view, the signal is going to go down significantly. So for every like 1% of obstruction, you lose like 20% of your signal or something like that. It's kind of crazy. When we were setting it up, we had some palm trees just on the edge. It really ruined the signal, even though the majority of the sky was clear. So we've got it set up on a big, tall post coming out of the corner on the north side of our house. Uh, lucky for us, the north to the north is the Bay of La Paz, so it's pretty clear and it works pretty well. And the app, once again, they have the app and you can go up on your roof and kind of like scan around and it will tell you if that is a good location or a bad location to put your device. So you don't have to kind of like mount it and see how it works. You just get up there on a ladder and kind of scan around the sky. So that's, uh, the app is, is really pretty helpful. And as far as internet connections go, it works pretty well. So you can stream uh, with Starlink. You can just browse websites and things like that. Where I'm concerned is more with Zoom. And this is where I need someone to help. So let's dig a little bit more into the technical geekery stuff of this. And also I'm going to reveal what I'm missing. So let's look at the computer here. And first off, I don't understand this map at all, but uh, it's got all sorts of colors. It's got yellows, it's got greens, it's got grays, um, but you can see kind of where I am. And currently for the last six minutes, there have been no outages. Uh, when I first started this, there was an outage for a few seconds in a one minute period. And that's where I'm really concerned and where I need some help understanding what's going on. So there's really, I think about four things that you need to think about when working with internet, uh, gauging whether it's working well. Uh, that would be kind of the download speed, the 
uh, the latency, the packet loss, and uh, there's one more latency, packet loss, download speed. And just generally how long it's connected, if it's disconnected or not, I think is that fourth one. So let's go through download speed. Right now, this morning, I ran a test, uh, 14 megabits per second download, 10 megabits per second upload uh, is not impressive by most standards in the United States. However, it will function for Zoom calls and it's going to function for streaming. It, it is fine for functioning. It's just not considered fast. Now, what I've seen with, with Starlink is it really does vary a lot. This also is using, um, for Starlink, this is using Wi-Fi, and that definitely cuts down versus being able to connect a cable directly to the Starlink router. You can actually, I'm gonna run a quick test using the app and share with you what I see. Uh, okay, so let's do a speed test. So on my phone, you can see it's showing more like 31 megabits, 38 megabits per second, and you know 12 megabits per second upload. So this is just using a different Wi-Fi connection to the same uh, the same hub. Now this advanced speed test is is kind of more interesting, and what this do does is it's showing you how fast the speed is from the Wi from the Starlink box to the satellites and then also from the connection on my phone to the Starlink box to the satellite. So you can see here, uh, this is showing 157 megabits per second. So if you were connected directly to that box, you'd get a better speed, uh, thus the importance of that ethernet connection. And here, looks like it just keeps testing and about 20 megabits per second upload, so not too bad. And this is showing around 50 megabits per second of download speed. So you can see that it's pretty variable also and look at that like a hundred well it keeps going down so but we're looking at around 80 megabits per second upload speed which is pretty damn good but now we're going to dive even deeper uh and that is looking at latency and packet loss and jitter is the other one that i forgot earlier so let's look here i, I run this software called speedify i like it it's not perfect but the idea is it's a vpn that will combine different internet connections together and it's software so it'll do this on your computer no hardware needed so here it is and you can see what i've got running here now is that i have starlink which is my wi-fi connection to starlink and then i have a backup so primary starlink backup is is my ethernet with with Telmex Fiber. So when all is running well, it's mostly the Starlink and a little bit of backup from the Telmex Fiber. So usage, I'm really not doing anything on my computer right now. So the the Starlink is, is uploading and downloading just a little bit. Let's head over to latency though. Now latency is the difference between, you know, when you send something from the internet or from your computer over the internet and how long it takes to respond. And this is where Starlink is not as good as um, as the the fiber. So you can see here fiber 25 milliseconds for something to go to the internet and come back. So you can see with these lines here, consistently very good latency. Now up here with uh, Starlink, we're looking at around uh, 70, 120, 106. So uh, all the way up to 200 uh, milliseconds. So really it's a, not good uh, in terms of how fast it is. It's, it seems to be resting this morning around that, you know, 70, I think 40 is what they're shooting for. Um, and it has a lot of jitter. So in other words, sometimes you can see this graph is really low and, you know, really relatively fast going back and forth. And sometimes it's really slow going back and forth. And I've seen this thing go all the way to almost one second that it takes for things to go back and forth, which is really, really slow. So uh, I can really mess with your Zoom calls and things like that. Not so much a problem when you're just streaming, but when you're trying to do something and it's connecting and, and talking to the internet really fast, that's when it can be a problem. So that's what I wanted to point out here was the latency is much more and much, uh, much different, much more variable. Now let's also go to loss. So this is how many, what percentage of that stuff that you sent out to the internet didn't make it back. Um, and like I said, this is, 
I'm not a computer guy. I was an IT guy like 20 some years ago, but this is where I can use help from someone like you. If you're watching and you want to help, uh, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. But essentially, we're seeing here as high as um, 27, so like almost a third of the stuff that we sent out to the internet didn't make it um, or didn't make it back. So it seems like, it, I mean, the internet is designed to be redundant and keep sending things and make things work. But once again, if you look down at the Telmex, at the fiber, we're looking at every single thing that got sent to the internet is making it back just fine. And I'm going to switch these around just to show you that even when it's uh, primary, it's going to be similar. So here, yeah, 30% for this little blip here. That's, that's definitely can be an issue. So yeah, so we've got those things out there and I would love to have your help understanding uh, what this means to be able to understand, you know, how often it disconnects from the internet to really be able to produce a really a good video that shows people exactly what to expect from Starlink. Can you do Zoom calls on Starlink? Um, we do this. And, but every once in a while, there's, there's little, you know, glitches with Zoom, but it's hard for us to tell, like, was that caused by Starlink? Was that caused by something else? So that's what I'm looking for your help with. Let me uh, talk about Speedify, though, because I think this is a good solution. So you can see here you combine multiple internet services. So, and you can combine them in many different ways. So I'm going to go here and change Ethernet, which is Telmex. And I can go and say, I want this to be the primary source. And then I can go back to Starlink and say, I want this to be the secondary. And you can see down here the description. So primary, always use this connection. Secondary, use this connection for speed boosts and fail over, but less than primary. So um, if primary goes down, definitely use this. If you're uploading a whole bunch of stuff or downloading a whole bunch of stuff, use this. Backup, use this only when, um, when the primary fails or never don't use this one at all. So we're changing this over to secondary just to be able to look at those statistics again and show you. So here we're not really doing much, but uh, our latency, it's going up a little bit as this becomes primary and we have it, you know, essentially have the computer using this a little more, but not nearly as much as the Starlink is its latency. Same thing with packet loss. Even though we're using this now, we're losing almost no, or actually we're losing zero packets. So in terms of those outages, I want to show you here um, that it does on the app show you how often the service is just down. And it shows you uh, outages that are more than 0.1 second, outages more than two seconds, and outages more than five seconds. And so right now, Looks like we've had one outage this morning at 2 a.m. that was 45 seconds long. So that would pretty be very disruptive to a Zoom call. Uh, yeah. But also, if you look at the 0.1 second outages and it's, you know, 10 a.m., we had a network issue that lasted just under a second. Once again, that could be pretty disruptive for a Zoom call. Um, at 9.39, we had a, you know, just less than one second. Also, we had a few of them around one second at around 7.40 a.m. So it seems like this is this is where I'm, I'm concerned that there are a lot of network outages, but I don't have this kind of app for the, the, the fiber service to be able to see. Really, I don't have this kind of detail for the other service. So once again, hopefully uh, someone out there can help me make a more, um, more detailed video about Starlink in Mexico. But thank you for watching, and especially thank you if you're reaching out with more information. Hasta luego.